Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another segment of Christians Under Construction, brought to you by the New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church, located at 4700 West Florissant, where the Reverend Dr. Brandon Blake is our pastor. My name is Priscilla Smith. I am one of the facilitators of Christians Under Construction, our Sunday School Ministry. Thank you for joining me this morning. I pray that all is well in your life and that you are reaping the blessings of Jesus the Christ. We have a very interesting lesson on today, and our title for the day is The Opposed Apostles the opposed apostles. As we're introducing the lesson, do me a favor, go ahead and pull out your Bible or your electronic device. We're going to be dealing with the book of Acts chapter 5 today. Acts chapter 5. We will be beginning our study at verse 25 and we'll go through verse 42. Again, Acts chapter 5, verses 25 through 42. Go ahead and get your uh, preparation made. Before we go any further, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, it's again that we come. We're so humbled in our spirits, Lord, because you allow us to worship, praise, and to serve you. We thank you for this opportunity to share the word with your people across this venue. We thank you, God, that you continuously bless our lives. You continuously protect us and you keep us. Thank you for the pastorship of Reverend Dr. Brandon Blake. Pray your continued blessings of anointed preaching, anointed teaching, and anointed service through him. Thank you, God, for the membership of the New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church. Just thank you for your general blessings, God. You are so good to us. I pray that today, during our time together, something will be said that will encourage, enhance, and give someone another opportunity to go forth in your name. It is in the blessed name of Jesus I continue to pray, I continue to believe, and yes, I'm going to continue to serve to the best of my ability in your name. It's in the blessed name of Jesus I continue to pray. Amen and thank God. All right, are we ready? Acts chapter 5. Verses 25 through 42. And again, our subject today is the opposed apostles. The opposed apostles. The introduction to this lesson uh, tells us that Jesus commanded his followers to be witnesses to the salvation from sin that can be found in him alone. But Jesus never promised that it would be easy. Just as Christ experienced rejection, suffering, so will his followers, you and I, as disciples of Christ. Suffering for Christ is cause not for despair, but rather for joy knowing that God uses our sufferings like Christ for his glory. Despite what some experts might think, there's no special uh, code or formula for church growth. The church preaching the gospel is God's ordained plan for church growth. Go ye into all the world and tell somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
in our lesson today, we are in the book of Acts. And the book of Acts describes the growth of the church from Jerusalem uh, out towards the ends of the earth. But as the disciples preached, the religious leaders continued to oppose God's will for the gospel to be carried forth. In Acts chapter 5, these leaders thought that they could keep the apostles from preaching by throwing them in jail. However, we saw in previous studies that the angel of the Lord opened the jail so they could escape and continue preaching. The church continued to grow through the sovereign Lord pouring out his spirit on people as they came to trust in Christ. But this only happened in the midst of persecution and opposition. Again, today, we have uh, three topics that we're going to be dealing with from the book of Acts chapter 5. Preaching Jesus requires convention is one. Preaching Jesus causes opposition is two. And preaching Jesus prompts joy is number three. We will begin with topic one. Preaching Jesus requires conviction from Acts chapter 5, and we'll be reading from chapter 25 through 32. Got it? All right, let's read. Preaching Jesus requires conviction. Someone came and reported to them, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the commander went with the servants and brought them in without force because they were afraid the people might stone them. After they brought them in, they had them stand before the Sanhedrin and the high priest asked, Didn't we strictly order you not to preach in this name? Look, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than people. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had murdered by hanging him on a tree. God exalted this man to his right hand as ruler and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God given to those who obey him. Preaching, <coughs> excuse me, requires, preaching Jesus requires conviction. In this particular study, we've already uh, discovered in Acts chapter 5, verses 17 through 24, that the apostles were put on trial, sent to prison, but the Lord once again confirmed his plan by sending an angel to release them from prison. In one sense, the angel of the Lord was uh, refurbishing, recommissioning them to continue preaching the gospel. The next morning, however, the religious leaders discovered that the men that they had thrown in prison were again preaching in the temple. Of course, this, is, this did not sit well with them. The apostles, however, knew that the message they had been given led to eternal life and could not be contained by a prison or a corrupt leader. This gospel 
needed to be declared and it needed to be declared with bold conviction even in the face of opposition. The council brought a second charge against the apostles in verse 38. The council said the apostles were determined to make them look guilty of the man's blood. Their statement was ironic because during Jesus' trial, they said that in Matthew 27, 25, his blood be on us and on our children. In an even deeper way, they were responsible for Jesus' death because of their sins. On one side of a board, on one side, there are the Sanhedrins who are trying to prevent the disciples from carrying God's word. On the other side are the apostles who have been commissioned by Jesus Christ to keep preaching and keep teaching. The church must preach the gospel because repentance and forgiveness are only found in Jesus. And the word must go forth and it must be preached. If the church were to stop uh, preaching the gospel, there will be no hope for the world. Eternal life is found only through the work of Jesus, through the teaching and the preaching of the word. Only through belief in Christ, perfect life, death on the cross, and resurrection will anyone uh, be saved. Peter explained that Jesus had been exalted to the right hand of God, and that demonstrated that he has authority and power over everything. Peter further expanded on the identity of Jesus as ruler and savior. Peter and the apostles continued preaching Jesus because he was the only true one who is truly in charge of all things. He has control of everything. Instead of submitting to the sinful desires of those corrupt leaders and stopping their ministry, the apostles had to submit to Christ. And they had been commissioned to do the will of the Lord. Peter told them that they were guilty of their sins, yet he offered repentance and forgiveness that could only be found in Jesus. He also used the opportunity provided in court to preach the gospel to their accusers. Not having the Holy Spirit, the rulers completely missed Jesus. Conviction to Christ is good, but will most often, in a lot of cases, lead to opposition. All right, let's move on to point two, preaching Jesus causes opposition. This part of our lesson is taken from Acts chapter five, verses 33 through 40. Let's read. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law who was respected by all the people stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered the men to be taken outside for a little while. He said to them, men of Israel, be careful about what you're about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody and a group of about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed and all his followers were dispersed and came to nothing. After this man, Judas 
the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and attracted a following. He also perished and all of his followers were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, stay away from these men and leave them alone. For if this plan or this work is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even be found fighting against God. They were persuaded by him after they called in the apostles and had them flogged, they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and release them. Preaching Jesus causes opposition. The gospel message demands a response. Peter and the apostles shared the good news about Jesus with the religious leaders. Uh, they even spoke of repentance and forgiveness that could be found in Christ. However, the leaders did not want to hear anymore. Instead, they were actually filled with hate and uh, disgust, and they actually wanted to put the apostles to death. The wording used to describe their anger could also be interpreted as they were cut into pieces. The gospel message cut them to the heart and instead of repenting and finding forgiveness in the Lord Jesus, they were filled with hate. The gospel will um, do one of two things. It will either humble you or it will enrage you. Many were humbled by the gospel. Actually, they repented. They placed their faith in Christ. Here in this part of Acts chapter 5, however, the religious leaders were filled with rage. And the reason for the rage could be tracked back uh, to the um, near the beginning of Acts chapter 5 in verse 17. The apostles were doing many signs and wonders, leading people to be healed and to come to faith in Christ. Ch uh, Acts chapter 5 uh, verse 17 says, Then the high priest rose up, he and all who were with him, who belonged to the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. And the jealousy only got worse as the apostles continued to preach Christ. And it eventually turned into anger, murderous anger. In trying to uh, 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 silence the apostles, the religious leaders were opposing God, the very God they thought they were serving. How should we respond as disciples of Christ when people are filled with rage or anger because of what we believe as Christians? My suggestion would be we should respond with humility and kindness, with love because of what Christ has done for us, with grief and with compassion. God protected his people, reminding the opposition that if the plan was of man, it would fail. So says the scripture. But if it was God, it would succeed. Gamaliel was a respected leader among the Pharisees. And he cautioned the council uh, in their dealings with this new movement. He calmed the council's fears, but by comparing the apostles to religious zealots, 
he was saying more than he knew. He reminded the council that the movement of if, if it was if the movement was of human origin, it wouldn't last forever. But if the movement was of God, then there would be nothing that they could do to stop it. Though Peter and John were beaten, God protected them through Gamaliel and kept them from being killed. Though they were beaten, the apostles had an interesting response to their persecution. Let's move on to our final point. Preaching Jesus prompts joy. This part of our lesson comes from Acts chapter 5, verses 41 and 42. Let's read. Then they went out from the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to be treated shamefully on behalf of the name. Every day in the temple and in various homes, they continued teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. The apostles rejoiced in their persecution because their hope and joy were not rooted in their circumstances, but in their faith in Jesus Christ. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus promised that his followers would be persecuted. He also made them aware that they would face hardships. He even said, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The apostles were full of joy because Jesus promised they would face suffering, and this promise included blessing. A major theme throughout 1 Peter is suffering. Peter wrote that Christians should rejoice while sharing in the sufferings of Christ so that you may also rejoice with great joy when his glory is revealed. If you are ridiculed because of the name of Christ, you are blessed because of the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. Peter's writings about rejoicing during suffering um, were not theoretical. He truly lived what he wrote. They were rejoicing because they were counted worthy to be treated shamefully on, on behalf of the name. The apostles knew that they must obey God rather than people. The persecution that they faced did not silence their sharing of the gospel. They only, they not only continued rejoicing in the face of persecution, they also continued preaching the word. Many of the apostles would uh, continue preaching and sharing the gospel all the way to their death as martyrs. Jesus commanded his followers to be witnesses of the salvation from sin that could be found in him alone. He never promised it would be easy. Just as Christ experienced rejection and suffering, so will his followers. Just as Christ faced rejection and experienced suffering, as a disciple of Christ, not everybody is going to believe you except that you are bringing a good news or a good word, you're going to be punished. You're going to be rejected. You're going to have some doors closed in your face. B 
because of your belief. The apostles were imprisoned. However, they did not respond in anger. No amount of suffering, rejection should deter us as believers from continuing to proclaim the life-saving gospel of Jesus Christ. As a follower, when people ridicule you for following Jesus, use it as an opportunity to continue to proclaim the only message of salvation. We should uh, continue to seek to share the good news of Jesus Christ because he alone is worthy. <coughs> Excuse me. The temple leaders almost decided to dispose of the believers as they had done with Jesus. But a highly respected teacher intervened. While the highly respected teacher acted in the interest of um, communal self-preservation, he spoke more truth than he realized. As a leader of Israel, he was admitting that only divine power could help a group of simple, uneducated, unarmed civilians expand upon the suffocating denomination of Rome. Preaching Jesus prompts joy. Not only did the promise, the, the punishment not deter the Christians, it also filled them with joy. It made them happy that they were suffering for the cause of Christ. They had suffered uh, physical pain and therefore in a very real sense they cannot they could not have been happier yet at the same time their reaction was one of joy because they had been regarded by God as worthy to take their share of suffering for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ when we are faithful to Christ in the midst of persecution, we can find joy in obedience, but in also knowing we can inspire others to join us in faithfulness. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that something has been said or done that will encourage your spirit Something has been said uh, during our time together that will encourage you to study your word and to use it as a part of your ongoing daily lives. Share your, share your gospel. Share your truth. Reap the benefits and the blessing of being a part of the army of God. Thank you for joining me today. Be blessed in your week. Again, I'm Priscilla Smith from the New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Dr. Brandon Blake is our pastor. Have a blessed week.